All right, it is two past the hour, two past the half an hour, I should say. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you to everyone who, who's joining us today. Um, this is the first uh, Talking Tim webinar over on the new Zoom platform uh, for NOCO. So thank you to all of you who've made the switch over. Um, we've made this uh, switch for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is uh, more accessibility features, including um, closed captioning. Uh, you should have that option on your screen there to, to either see live captioning. Sure. Now I can't captioning. imagine that we're really going to get more than. And you'll see that uh, at the bottom of, of your screen and you can use that. The other is the uh, ability to share video uh, will be greatly improved uh, on this platform. We have a short video uh, in one of the presentations today. And uh, as many of you seen the, the use of video on these fantastic Talking Tim webinars in the past, we're, we're hoping to feature that uh, more. And then additionally, uh, we'll get out the uh, recordings and uh, um, presentations a, a bit quicker using the Zoom platform. So uh, I put the NOCO newsletter there in the chat box uh, for past ones. Do be sure to sign up uh, for the newsletter. We'll have uh, the recording of today's webinar out in tomorrow's newsletter. So um, sign up to receive uh, information on, on how to receive that recording and, and share it with friends. Um, Again, thank you to everybody for, for making this the switch over to Zoom. Um, the couple things about this platform before we get started. Uh, first, two ways to communicate with us. Uh, there's the chat box there uh, that I uh, see everybody checking in on. Uh, it's a great way to share messages with uh, friends. Uh, let us know that you're here. Uh, chat with uh, chat with people, provide comments. Uh, if there's any technical issues, you can get a hold of, uh, of me or Kevin Vita. Uh, uh, in, in that chat box. And then there's the Q&A box. So, so two different ways, the chat box first, the Q&A box. We got our first question here. Are there PDHs for this webinar? Yes, there are. If everybody sees the Q&A box, um, they will see that uh, there's that question in there. Um, and uh, PDHs are available. Um, I will be posting the uh, PDH form on our website and letting you know about it in the newsletter tomorrow. Um, or you can uh, check on the website after this is done. So again, two ways to get a hold of us, the chat box or the, the question and answer box. Use that Q&A box for direct questions for our presenters. We will have time at the end uh, for questions. Uh, thank you once again uh, to Federal Highways, the, the Tim team, Joe Tebow, Paul Joden, and Jim Ostrich uh, for allowing us to host these webinars uh, every month and, and for bringing such fantastic resources uh, to the Tim community and uh, operations community at large. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Joe. Greetings, everyone. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Uh, here we are. It's late July already. How about that? Uh, Got to start off by thanking uh, the folks at NOCO, uh, Adam Hops and uh, Kevin Vita and their support team for all they do to make to make these uh, webinars possible. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes uh, to make this unfold. So thank you to you folks uh, and all you do. Uh, I'm Joe Tebow, Federal Highway Administration uh, Headquarters uh, out of D.C. I have the, uh, the pleasure and honor of working with Paul Joden and Jim Ostrich on the uh, Traffic Incident Management Team. Uh, we have a great presentation for you today. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's always good that when, when we reach out and, and, and look for speakers that we get you know, so much participation. Uh, but so you know, we're, we're indebted and thankful uh, to, to all the champions out there for Tim who, who support us when we need it uh, and all the great things that they're doing are, and, and are willing to share. Um, so, you know, with, with that said, uh, take a look at today's agenda. And here's what we have. Uh, Jim, uh, after, I, after I'm finished here, uh, the, Jim will jump in and, and give us a little more of an update uh, from uh, traffic incident management status, training status, um, then, then we're going to shift into uh, Paul Joden, who's uh, going to share the time with Jim again and uh, talk about the nub uh, and uh, what it is and, and how do we make it relevant again, kind of kind of revisiting the nub. Uh, to uh, Around 2 o'clock or so, John, our good friend John McClellan from Minnesota DOT is going to join us and, and share some great information with us on planning special and responding to special events. And uh, we have some great folks from Iowa. And the Iowa DOT, they're going to share their information on uh, their program overview and, and their strategies for quicker incident detection out on the roads. And then, of course, we'll always have a, uh, an opportunity for uh, questions and answers. Um, so with, with that said, um, take a look at uh, what we have next month on uh, August 24th. Uh, our, our talk and Tim right now as it's 
as it's kind of measuring up, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have the Tim capability maturity self-assessment overview, with some, some updates and tweaks to that. Uh, folks from uh, Maryland are going to talk about their incident prediction studies and uh, good friends from Florida Heartland, Tim committee are going to talk to us a little bit about the things they're involved with and progress that they're making. With that, uh, I think it's time to uh, bring in uh, Jim, Jim Ostrich, uh, uh, my, my, uh, my esteemed uh, partner, and uh, it's going to bring us up to speed on uh, the, the traffic incident management training. Jim, you there? Jim Ford, Joe, echo everything you said uh, word for word, uh, my friend. Uh, so yeah. right into it. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Jim. Okay. I thought I lost audio for a second. Uh, I'm so I'm here's the, yeah, thanks, Paul. The snapshot um, of where we are, daggone it, we still haven't hit that 600K milestone. Uh, sorry, I have to say that. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, most of you are trying, no disrespect. Most of you are trying, but there's still way too many states that in my humble opinion are not. So I'll just leave it at that. Next slide. Where uh, you can see uh, in terms of Tim responder line of duty desk, this is the tail of the tape right now. Um, take a close look. We're we're headed, you know, too quickly uh, in the wrong direction again for 2022. Uh, so that last bullet down there, the training, he harping, and I have to harp, and Paul and Joe, all of us, uh, you got to train, ladies and gentlemen. We got to train. It's one of the few tools that we have uh, to really try to stop the carnage. Uh, motors as well, et cetera. Next slide. This is a snapshot of the discipline uh, train uh, uh, breakdown. You can see there. And uh, obviously, uh, fire EMS is doing uh, very, very well. Law enforcement is, is, is doing a little better, but there's just so much more to go uh, in terms of training the well over a million law enforcement, if you think about it. I mean, it, it, all, all uh, you know, all departments, local and sheriff and state police and, and Metro PDs, uh, county, et cetera. Next slide. This is the map showing the train to trainers. I included it this time. I think I've told you all before, sometimes I, I don't include all the all the maps that uh, are generated by HNTB, uh, Katie Belmore and, and Battelle for purposes of giving a national status report. But uh, the reason I'm showing at this time is because we're uh, fast approaching a time where FHWA is gonna be sponsoring virtual train to trainers as well as possibly some in-person train to trainers. So. Uh, that doesn't preclude you from uh, leading your own, uh, you know, state-led train the trainers, uh, for which Paul, Joe, and myself will certainly, uh, and Katie, be there uh, to support you. Um, so feel free to email us or call us if you have any questions on that point. Uh, next slide. This is the breakdown by web base as well as in person. Um, look at your state. Pause here. Next slide. This is the total by state. Next slide, the uh, unified goal, or rather I should say the, uh, the national goal, 55% or greater. Not sure why the states that are lagging behind still, what exactly is the problem, but Paul, Joe, and our contract team 
myself, we're, we're on a quest. We're going to find out, you know, what is it that if you have Tim committees or even if you don't, but a majority of you have Tim committees and you should be uh, promoting the training. And uh, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, Katie, the other way or Adam, if you're, if you're driving, here's the breakdown by the, you know, uh, by the numbers, if you will, from last report to, to this report, the progress. I don't want to look at the table to the right. It makes me want to cry. Next slide. Top 10 as usual. Next slide. So as Joe mentioned, uh, we want to visit the, the NUG, the National Unified Goal. It's been a while. It's still very much out there. Uh, and we're finally going to have, uh, you know, uh, invest some time today uh, to talk with you and get your inputs. Um, we think it's important. And next slide. Little history on, on the NUG, as you can see, uh, how it all started uh, initially from a scan that was done internationally and uh, which led to the National Traffic Incident Management Coalition back in 04 uh, to, to raise the bar, talk about traffic incident management, the benefits and, and all the moving parts, if you will. Uh, so uh, you can see the NTIMC consisted of a multi multidisciplinary coalition. Uh, some of you may recall working with them as Paul, Joe and I do and uh, whether you take it as 15 years ago or, or rather 18 years ago to 04 or 15 years ago back in 07 when it was uh you know officially adopted and uh we started promoting uh the nug next slide so here are the goals when anybody asks anybody on this webinar today if you're ever asked what's the nut what are the goals of the nug you should know these by heart and you should, you should be able to talk to them um it you know the, these are the three goals that were established and um very very important we talk a little bit about on on the first one responder safety it's it, it also includes motorist safety but certainly responder safety is uh, very dear to our hearts because that's our brothers and sisters out there protecting the public and, and doing everything they can to safely and quickly clear incidents. And then lastly, uh, the communications on scene during response and on scene. Uh, and those, um, those are the three goals of the NUG. And so memorize them. Uh, if you haven't already. Next slide. Okay, so here at this point, uh, I think it's Katie Belmore is going to take over because uh, for to get your input uh, through Mentimeter. So there's the code for everyone. Go to go to the Mentimeter menti com and please participate. Katie. Thanks, Jim. Uh, just one second. I'm going to share the. Can everybody see that? The Mentimeter screen? Not yet. Oh, sorry. We there see we go. the URL. Here, here it comes. Here we go. There we go. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so, for the first question here, um, we just have a kind of an awareness question for everybody to answer. So, um, I also put the link to the Mentimeter, um, the direct link in the chat pod, or um, from here, um, you guys uh, could use that Mentimeter and the code at the top of the slide there. So um, we're just looking to get a kind of a feel for how uh, people are aware of the NUG and if that's something they, they've been talking about recently. So we'll just give people another another minute on that. 
Katie? Yep. Yeah, you want to just touch real quick on, or are you going to touch on the strategies? Because I failed to mention the uh, the eighteen, or no. yeah, you you are going to touch on. It. I yeah. was going to say that's that's after the Mentimeter. We'll go back to the slideshow. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So it seems like a large. You know, we have a slightly in the. Um, direction of yes, that most people are aware of the NUG. Um, and I would hope that most people that are familiar with the training would see that that's definitely a slide in there and definitely something that gets referenced multiple times. Um, it seems like it's a little less um, as a kind of a standard thing referred to uh, when we're talking about Tim. So um, for the next three questions that we're going to ask everybody to participate in. Um, we really want to take a minute to review the NUG itself and the three main goals um, and make sure that, that, you know, get your guys's input, that those are still relevant, that they're still worded the way that they should be, um, or get your input on to, to whether or not maybe they should be updated. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next question we have. So uh, go ahead. Was, did someone say something? Hmm. So I think, so the first one we're looking at is the first portion of the NUG, which is responder safety. Um, and so what we have here is three options for you guys to consider. And the first one is pretty simple. Um, we wanna say no change. We'll keep that uh, simple and, and responder safety. Um, then we have two other options for people to consider. Um, one would be to update that, that to say responder and motorist safety. Um, and then the third option is to update that to say safety of responders and all road users. Um, and that all road users um, really make sure we're encompassing, you know, other drivers, pedestrians, bicyclists, that that phrase road users really gives us that um, comprehensive um, capture of everybody that's out there. So I, li I like to see the numbers we're getting. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Hey, Katie, mm -hmm. may I interrupt? Yep. Please interrupt. Since it's too late, I already, I'm already interrupting. So, but you're saying about all those numbers, but we have 150 people on or something like that. And there's only 40, what, 40, 50, 50 people are participating. Where is everybody else? Let's go. <laughs> Don't be so lazy. Thank you, then, Paul. Thank you. Get yes. on the Mentimeter. We want, we want your input. You're, you're all part of our national program. We want, we don't want the world according to Jim, Paul, and Joe. We want it to be your input. So let's go. Let's get on there. Don't make me call you guys well out said. individually because we can see who's signing up or not. Let's go. <laughs> <at dmita .com. laughs> sorry. Sorry, Katie. No, no, that's good. Um, I feel like we have a pretty clear indication where people are um, preferences for this one. Um, we're getting more and more votes for um, you know, making that slight update for safety of responders and all road users. So um, that's good. I like that. I like that. Yeah, good. Do we want to give it another minute, Paul, or are we good to go to the next? I think we can go. We get. I don't think we're going to be able to overcome um, the voting on this one. I think. Uh, I, I, right, and I think we got up to seventy, so more people join. Yeah. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, 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 we have a few more questions. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't logged in, let's go. We want more, we want more than 70 on the next one. Um, you know, the, the login information is up top, mentimeter.com, and then the code is there, 9640-6363. And it's in the chat. Just click on the link. It's easy. Oh, there, there's even, also the direct link is right there as well. So you have two options, two options. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Um, and so the next main portion of the NUG is safe quick clearance. Um, and we'll be honest, um, for the most part, we didn't have 
any recommendations for this one. We wanted to kind of keep it up to the group. And so this is more of a word cloud. Um, so if you guys think that safe quick clearance is the, the way to go and the best option, um, go ahead and type that in and we'll start seeing that in the word cloud. Um, if there's other words that you wanna add in there or another phrase that you think would be good, thank you for someone is right there, like adding in the word efficient. Um, that's what we were hoping to capture um, with this for that, that second main portion of the goal, safe quick clearance. There we go. So if I, if I may chime in again, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I am probably not in the, um, in the majority here, but do we need the word safe? I mean, is it is safe understood by all? Is it, um, um, so, you know, is it just quick clearance? Or, uh, is safe quick clearance good? And you, maybe you could put answers in the, in the chat too, because this question doesn't call for that type of answer. I do see safe in there as a pretty big word, Paul. <laughs> is that how you tell them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, more, yeah. The, bigger the, the bigger the lettering, the more um, input. So yeah, yeah more people that have typed that in. So. I see. Yeah, so we'll give this just another minute or so. I like seeing people are still typing in ideas, so that's that's fantastic. Yeah, great, great. 51 people are chiming in, that's great. Okay. Well, that efficient word is, is getting a fair amount of uh, activity too there. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll just give it another another 30 seconds here and then we'll go on to the next. All right, so thank you guys very much. That's, that's very helpful. We'll kind of take this back um, and maybe at the next one, we have some options that we can look at similar to what we did um, with responder safety and similar to what we're gonna look at here. Um, the third portion of the goal is- hey, Katie, can I just, yep. just interrupt again? I'm yep. sorry. You know, so I see in the chat there's a word about safe and all that. So I'm I'm glad uh, I'm glad we we had this discussion because um, we all we all understand safe is important, right? Um, and and I, I totally agree. But we we used to hear, um, well, you guys just want us to do quick clearance and do, not do it safely, and and that was never the intent. So I think uh, that's why that was put in as clarification. And I think that's why it should remain. Um, but you guys, it seemed all agreed. So um, that's, I, I, I wasn't um, implying that we wouldn't, wouldn't want to be safe. I just wanted to know what your feeling was about the wording. So. All right, so I can see you guys are already um, responding to this one. So we have some options here. Um, related to this prompt reliable interoperable communications portion of the NUG. Um, so we had the same as before with responder safety where we just said no change, leave it as is. Um, we also included an option here that maybe this could be removed from the NUG. Um, and then we have two options that are similar but not exactly the same. Um, the first one is communication coordination, cooperation and commitment. Um, and then the last one that is um, slightly ahead right now is this one uh, where we just rephrased it to say a commitment to communication, coordination, and cooperation. Um, so I'm sure plenty of you out there have heard that referred to as the three C's. Um, so it's, it's really how we integrate that commitment 
portion of it uh, into the phrasing is kind of the difference between those two. Interrupting again. Go for um, it. I was done. <laughs> <laughs> so um, here's the here's my philosophy on on this one. So this we, you, we're yet to explain for those of you that don't know that there is, and we should have probably explained this up front that there are 18 strategies that support the, the, the goals, the three, currently the three goals. I, I happen to think communications is critical, right? We all know that that's the most critical piece of this. Um, but I, I feel it's a strategy to, uh, to achieving the other two goals. So, um, uh, and, and I see, and I'm concerned about, I see that there's a big, um, the, you know, a big uh, vote for the the you know commitment, communication, coordination, and cooperation. So the unified goal, the third goal, would be that big long sentence. So I I sort of like more the catchier versions of it. You know, safe, quick clearance, um, uh, respond to safety, safe, quick clearance, prompt, reliable, and probable communication. So. Uh, although I, I am not a big fan of that last one, um, by way of full disclosure, um, I, I'm even less of a fan of making it longer. So here I am being the bad guy again, sorry. Well, and I will say we're only adding one word, the commitment to, but but yeah, I mean, and I, and I guess we're adding and, but it was four words, we're focusing on four different main okay. words. Um, okay. But I also think that, uh, you know, in some of the, to make it catchier, Paul, we may be able to say something like the commitment to the three C's, right? Um, it, you know, as, as you go along, I think a lot of people are aware of that. And then you would always have a version that had it spelled out, right? So just a thought to, to keep it catchier. Okay. All right, well, we got even better participation on this one. We had 81 people participate in the voting. Um, so I think we're good there. Um, yeah, thanks everybody for participating. That's super helpful. And we'll kind of compile this and come back and then, um, so right now I'll, I'll stop sharing. I'll give it back to you, um, Adam, to share the rest of the main PowerPoint. Um, and we'll talk about, like uh, Paul said, the different strategies um, and then over the next couple of talking tim webinars we'll we'll kind of do a similar thing gain, you know looking for people's input uh into these strategies so i'll turn it back over to you guys yeah it goes back to paul yeah oh sorry jim yeah i'm trying to get through this uh because um adam says we're running late and what else is new adam um, so, you know, in support of the, the three objectives, uh, there are uh, 18 strategies. Six of those strategies are what we call cross-cutting foundational strategies, and then, then the other 12 are core strategies. And we just want you to think about this. And Katie, don't we have a, 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 um, a PDF to share with them that, that explains all the strategies? Uh, yeah, we do have that. Um, and I'm not sure the best way. Can I actually upload that? Yeah, Katie, you can just place that in the chat box or hit the file button in there. Everybody will have it. Perfect. Yeah, I'll share that right now that goes in. Yeah, it gives a detailed description yeah. of each one of these. So I'll do that. Okay, right I'll, I'll just read them real quick and you guys can read. Uh, we're not going to go into these today, but and some, and, and later on talking to him, we're going to you know dive into these a little bit. We will say that they all partner, they all um, link a uh, map, I guess we call it map to the self assessment in some way, shape, or form. But this is another way of looking at this, the, um, the framework for a, a, an effective TIM program. I won't read these all to you, um, but they're right in front of you. So um, I think you can all read. So uh, just go to the next slide. And then here are some others. Um, the seven, eight, and nine of what we got. We, um, relative to respond to safety, and then, um, then 10, 11, 12, um, safe quick clearance, so next slide. And then um, there's the communications, a lot on communications. I think we might wanna figure out a way to um, maybe reduce those, the number of strategies there. Now remember, these strategies are, are ours. They, um, 
you know, this was put together uh, in cooperation with a large group that actually had a couple of meetings. I was at the last meeting. I don't recall any other meetings that I attended, but it was in California and there was quite a bit of discussion here, but now, you know, that was years ago and now it's ours. So um, do we want to a, keep using this, these things? Is this, are these the, the um, strategies that we want? Do we want to change any? Do we want to remove any? Do we want to um, uh, combine them. So um, keep that in mind and we'll, and we will, because communication can mean a lot, right? A lot of different things. So um, with that, is that our last slide, Katie, from this perspective? Yep. So there's, you guys know how to get a hold of us. So the next one, uh, Joe, Mr. Tebow, I mean, I'm back to you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, great presentation. And, and thanks everyone for the participation in there. Um, yeah, Mentimeter is a great thing. I, I really enjoy that. It's a great tool. Uh, put it in your toolbox if you don't already have it. Uh, so let's push forward with the agenda. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, a good friend, great friend of, of the TIM program, always pushing forward. Uh, we have John McClellan here. John's a freeway operations supervisor at uh, Minnesota DOT's Regional Transportation Management Center. Uh, John's worked for DOT since 2002. This group's responsible for monitoring freeway traffic cameras, locating incidents, deploying overhead signage, <laughs> pardon, coordinating a response with state patrol, and dispatching the freeway incident response safety team. So as John prepares for his uh, presentation, uh, I'll just remind everyone, please keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times. <laughs> Thanks, and uh, go take it away, John. Can you hear me okay? Hear you great. Okay, and am I showing the right slide? Do you, do you see the PowerPoint major, slide? Major events and packing freeways. All right, great. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks, everybody on the team. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Katie. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, <laughs> when Katie approached me about this a couple of weeks ago, I was like, well, can you kind of talk about, you know, the events that happened here a couple of years ago and then kind of fit it in with Super Bowl and special events? And it's and I tried, and but <laughs> it's like going between uh star wars and the purge it's like the spectrum is so great between what we went through um with some of the events last year and then um and then you know and then kind of the more say sort of big deal but kind of more routinely big deal stuff like super bowl which is like wow super bowl was a big deal but then holy moly the stuff we went through was um quite uh expanded it out a little bit so I will cut off my video here if I can. Oh, there it is up there, just for bandwidth. Um, okay, so yeah, so everything that's on that picture is all story. It's all stuff that that we saw. Um, it was nuts. So for background, um, RTMC Regional Transportation Management Center is in um, in Roseville, just north of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Joint dispatch facility for State Patrol. Uh, MnDOT maintenance, and then MnDOT freeway operations. And state patrol is part of DPS, so it's a separate state agency, uh, unlike some other states. There's DOT and DPS. Um, one big room, all about open sharing of information, no walls, no barriers. Um, the dispatch floor takes up a good part of the building. I mean, that's what most of the building was designed for, was for that dispatch floor. Uh, we've been in here 20 years, and it's all state workers, no, uh, no contracted staff. Um, so our RTMC is highly focused, not, not our, O U R E, our TMC is highly focused on um, real time incident management. That's really what we do here as a, as a primary thing. That's what the dispatchers behind me are doing. Um, and really, it's been focused historically on the metro area, Minneapolis and St. Paul Metro, and then expand it a little bit more out. Uh, outstate more recently, but it's really, it's about trying to find every incident, anything that's going on the freeway, crash, stall, fire, debris, find it on camera. I mean, typically 20 seconds, get it on camera and start triaging it. Um, is the location correct? Put up the message board, send the service patrol. Um, and then um, just just kind of that working on the little stuff and then scaling up to the big stuff. But really the concentration on the little stuff, the goal to try to get things found, get them cleared a few minutes quicker, and then you multiply that by 50, 100 events a day, and, and then that's where you get some benefit. Um, we monitor State Patrol's audio, and we're also on State Patrol's CAD system. We use State Patrol's CAD, and the Service Patrol first is also set up. We use State Patrol's events, 
uh, and we um, record our benchmarks in there, at least for the uh, traffic uh, related events. Um, so background for Minnesota, um, in the 90s, there was a very vigorous, very strong Tim steering committee uh, here. There was a principal engineer, a grad engineer, and a 50-50 worker. 50% um, doing ops, 50% doing Tim stuff. That's the position I was hired for back in 2002 was as that 50% that busy bee. Um, all of that got lost in the, in the early 2000s. The, um, uh, the, the aftermath of the 9-11 economic crunch uh, combined with some political stuff, combined with some other stuff, budget cuts, freezes, attrition, um, that principal, she got promoted, she went up and we couldn't refill. That spot was left open for a year and then it boom, disappeared and it don't even have it anymore. Um, same thing happened to the grad engineer position. That one also disappeared. Now on the plus side, that grad engineer is now our office director. So that's pretty cool. So he has a long history uh, and a lot of experience on the Tim part of it in this day-to-day -day kind of Tim-focused TMC. Um, but the actual dedicated positions went away. Um, and then um, basically I, I, because of, we had, we had other losses in the ops and really the focus became um, as we had the opportunity, as I got promoted and replacing my old spot and as other people here left, never could add positions, but it was about re, retooling, uh, reclassifying positions as they opened up to really focus them as this real-time Tim dispatch part of it. So um, we have not had a background staff to do Tim things in 20 years. Um, responder training has been the Minnesota version, which traditionally has been agency specific. So, you know, such and such fire department, such and such police department, typically two hours, no advertising. It's all just word of mouth. Uh, and it's basically me and a couple of other folks as we have the opportunity to do it, but because there's no background staff to, to support anything more. On the plus side, um, all of that work in the 90s and the early 2000s really helped, uh, I think, and then some consistency on our side and changes on the other, on the other groups have really helped um, with good relationships and good understanding of who does what. Um, so when there's problems, they can usually be addressed on the floor between the supervisors um, for the most part. Um, finally, we do now have a full-time Tim person starting. Um, and this was another one that was uh, froze for two years because this time because of COVID hiring restrictions, but he'll be starting next month. Um, so that's good. So at least we have a full-time person uh, focused on Tim starting next month. And then there's also a consultant that's been hired by our, by the DPS and it, a different one, a different part of DPS and state patrol office traffic safety, but they are also assisting on formulating some Tim, some direction, some Tim direction. So, um, so I think there's some progress on the, on the bigger part of it here, but it's been a long time. Um, something else for background in Minnesota, and this this kind of came out of listening to other you know other presentations over over the years. So Minnesota, you know, we don't have hurricanes, right? We have tornadoes, we have you know you have flooding, but it's localized. It's not like the entire state or like the entire region of multi states is going to have to be evacuated or again get hit by a hurricane. I mean, we don't deal with that here. Fortunately, we have fires, we have grass fires, but it's not fires where uh, cities have to be evacuated or towns get swallowed up with the people in them and they become mass fatalities, at least not in 120 years in Minnesota. Um, and, you know, it's cold. It's Minnesota. It gets cold in the wintertime. We get snow. We get six, eight inches, 10 inches. Yeah, it's a big deal. It takes a couple of days. It's not a crisis. It's not like we're getting three, four feet of snow at a time like some other parts do. So really some Minnesota's statewide emergency ops, so the state's emergency operations part is pretty modest. I mean, really modest compared to what I've seen in other states as far as the ability to um, put people together from a state level and having the state organize things. It's really every, a lot of stuff in Minnesota is a lot more local focused and then kind of expands from that. Um, okay, so civil disturbances. You know, civil disturbances are people. Um, the, the pictures on the bottom are the same location. That's 35W in the Mississippi River. Uh, the picture on the bottom left is the bridge collapse, which the 15th anniversary is next week. Um, strictly from a Tim perspective, that was pretty basic. The road's closed. Nobody's going through. We're going to shut it down. It's pretty basic. I mean, beyond everything else that was going on with the bridge collapse, just strictly from a Tim position, 
it was shut it down. It was pretty simple. The one on the right is 10,000 people. It's at least two different marches that came together on uh, the Sunday, the week after George Floyd was murdered and uh, just assembled on the Mississippi River Bridge. Um, and, you know, 80 percent, 90 percent of these people are, you know, just there to protest. They're there, you know, because it's a thing to be doing. The problem is, is that one or two or maybe three percent of the folks in here are um, actively have active agendas to do a lot more and a lot more damage and to um, cause things to happen. And it's both far left, but also far right as well. Um, and then you figure, you know, and one or two percent out of a hundred people, okay, that's one person, but one or two percent out of 10,000 people, that's a hundred, that's 200 people who are hardcore focused on wrecking things or worse. And then you figure another 10 percent of this group that's going to follow along and is going to kind of be, be stirred up. So you've got a serious situation here where how do you shut this down? How, how close do you want your people to be? to shut this down, to shut this traffic down where they're not in harm and where their equipment can't be taken and used for very bad things, which was a real concern. Um, and then you throw into this, just on a general level, um, the also the opportunists, um, the looting, the arson, stuff like that. So that's, that, that is really the hard part with civil disturbance is you actively have people trying to sabotage and do potentially really bad stuff with your things and how do you deal with it? Um, and what if you don't have any cops? What if you don't have any law enforcement? Not for hours, but for days and for weeks, there is no law enforcement presence. If your folks are out there and something happens and they ask for help, nobody's gonna come get them because there's nobody to come and get them. Um, you had massive crowds, you had violent elements within these crowds, you had a variety of different motivations. Again, majority of it peaceful, majority of it civil disobedience, but still enough within these crowds that you had legitimate concerns. And then the fact that you would have 2000 people just appear at one end and another 2000 people appear over here and, and trying to keep track of even where, where these groups are gonna come from and just their sheer sure size. So then that kind of circles around the problem is, well, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, so how do you shut it down? Well, you know, there's no safe way to shut it down. You know, we don't have any help. We can't do it. We can't shut it down. But when the fuel tanker drives through this crowd of 10,000 people, if one person in this crowd had died, if 10 people in this crowd had died, if 100 people in this crowd had died, me saying we did the best that we could when it mattered. I mean, that would not have, that would not have stood up. Um, so, you know, even, so, I mean, don't, you know, if you're ever in this position, keep trying to think of things that you can do. And I'll come up with that in the next slap, step, slide, but um, it, yeah, it, 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 it just don't get to a point where you, where it gets normalized, where, Boy, you're really stuck and you keep thinking and you may still be stuck, but just keeping in the back of your head that as stuck as you are, it's not going to make any difference if things real, go really bad because that's not going to that's not going to hold up in court and it's not going to hold up in um, in the public. So which is a scary spot to be. All right. So some of the stuff that we came up with um, kind of getting to do this all over again with some preparation for the trial for Officer uh, Chauvin's trial and keeping in mind, I mean, you know, the chances of a cop being convicted for something is pretty low. So we were highly, heavily expecting that, that this was all going to happen again a year later. Um, so this was something that we came up with hot, warm, cold zones. And this comes out of, you know, out of fire and out of hazmat. But this was a way to articulate to the service patrol and to the service patrol dispatchers and to an extent with our own maintenance folks uh, on, on how to set up and where to set up safely. So cold, you know, no reasonable expectation. I mean, some could still happen, but no reasonable expectation that you're going to encounter a, a group of people. Um, warm is, yeah, there's something a block away, maybe a couple of blocks away. But if you're paying attention and combination of you paying attention and overwatch from TMC, you have a reasonable amount of time where you put your cones out, you get everything ready to go and you keep your eyes open. And if overwatch says you need to get out of there, then you can get out of there safely. And a lot of this was for, for shutting down ramps and stuff like that. 
um, just in case, uh, yeah, just as a, as a strategy. And then hot is basically you're, you're too close. I mean, you're going to be overrun. And even within that overrun scenario, um, being reasonable and being thoughtful and being self-educated on the command level or on the DOT command level of not panicking either and not creating a situation where you're giving orders or your folks who are out there, yeah, they may have a group of people around them, but making sure that that they know the difference between, yeah, this is one where you really need to get out of there or you leave your truck versus, you know what, this is fine. Just let them go by. This is a totally different group and it may look scary, but it's a totally different group and really don't think we're going to have a problem. So that gets into some some amount of detail there, but um, yeah. Um, so, so some of the other things that came out of all this, and again, this is completely insane. This is stuff I never would have thought we would be be thinking about, but you can't have type threes in the hot warm, the hot or warm zone. They get they get disassembled, they get turned into weapons, the poles get get thrown at officers, they get smashed, they smash through windows, um, the metal slats get thrown, the sandbags get dropped off of bridges on the traffic. You can't have type threes anywhere near where any of these groups are coming through. Cones are useless. They get picked up, they get thrown around, they put them on their head. Um, barrels are better, but then this was something that we learned 10 years before out of the RNC, the Republican National Convention. And I think that was from, that. this came out of Seattle from 99 in the, in the World Trade Organization, is that we had, there was a guy came up from Texas, I think before the RNC and was stealing barrels cutting them in half, painting them black, and basically making them in the shields so that then the protesters or rioters could use these as shields against the, um, the law enforcement 40 millimeter. And it's one thing too, if this is just, you know, a standoff in the middle of the street with, you know, cops shooting, you know, cops shooting 40 millimeter at a group of people in the street. What we saw last year um, was, Again, another borrowed strategy from this case, Hong Kong, of the protesters using umbrellas to block, again, block tear gas, block 40 millimeter, and then lining themselves up next to the fence around this police station with the intent of then cutting a hole in the fence, opening the fence up, and then uh, rushing in on this police station to take the police station over. Um, so this is how serious this stuff can be. Um, so what we did, for the Chauvin trial, um, we identified basically 30 something uh, ramps uh, that were in the hot zone, they're in the warm zone, and we pre-deployed um, Triton barriers. I know there's some other commercial names for them, but basically the, the big hollow plastic J barriers that you fill full of water as a, uh, as a ballast. So these were pre-staged in the grass, and the intent was, hey, if the officer gets acquitted, combination with a uh, curfew being called, Crew would go out in daylight hours. As soon as that curfew was called, they'd start dragging these barriers across, um, filling them up, and then getting out of there. And at least it was something. At least we would have something. We would make some attempt to try to shut down um, some of these areas in the hot zone, not have any personnel nearby. At least it was something. And that came out of, again, that incident with the fuel tanker on the bridge. So, you know, going back then, you know, going back in time to 2008 and the RNC, um, some lessons that were learned on our side, um, and this is me as a dispatcher and then trying to carry this forward is that when I became a supervisor, um, you know, we had, we were already had a good process, a good, a good way of, of um, shutting freeways down um, based off of what we saw, based off of the service patrol. Um, so don't complicate that. You know, if you have a good process that works, don't complicate it, make it scalable, but don't add extra steps into it for the dispatchers. Um, traffic control is traffic control mostly. Um, again, don't complicate it. Um, having good intelligence on the floor is important. Listening to the audio, listening as close as you can be to those initial reports to be able to say, yeah, here's what's going on, to be at the forefront, not in the background. And then um, the supervisors are the ones who can be there to step in and say, hey, we're doing things a little bit differently this time or have them do this instead. They're also the firewall between, you know, whether it's the public or whether it's management wanting to find out what's going on. They're talking to the supervisors. They're not talking to the dispatchers themselves. And then something else was as much as possible, not having management on the ops floor. Um, unless they are willing to answer a question, if there's something happened, there's some crisis just arrived, that management person be better be able to say, yes, do this, no, do, do, don't do that. 
because um, that was another problem that we saw that, that came up. It just added to the confusion of having bosses floating around uh, who couldn't who couldn't answer questions. Um, and then something getting back, you know, scaling back down to the back down to the Super Bowl and Final Four. Um, you know, a lot of benefit if, when you get the opportunity to talk to other states who've done it. That was a huge help for us uh, talking to Arizona. Um, even though a lot of things didn't, you know, entirely pan out the same way, it was still helpful because we had so little information about what to expect. It was really helpful getting some of that information from them. And then what we did um, for the MAC, the multi-agency command center, um, you know, and there's different ways to approach us. For us on the TMC level, it was basically taking what we do here at the RTMC and making it a one person thing and having that at the Mac. So instead of having, you know, and there's still a maintenance person from MnDOT in the Mac who could be asked questions, but the TMC role was same thing that we do here. You're listening to, you're listening to the radio, you're listening to patrol audio, you're listening to the FSP dispatch. Scanner was nice to hear some of the TAC channels, you got access to the cameras and it's about situational awareness. It's about knowing, hey, here's this thing that's coming up right now probably before everybody else in the room even knows about it. You, you hear about it, you found it, you got it up on camera. And then when somebody asks, you can say, oh yeah, it's up there in the top left. Or, hey, by the way, this thing's coming. So uh, heads up. And that uh, was also something that even before the Super Bowl, um, we were asked to set up some sort of a role at the new stadium, the new US Bank Stadium. And this was the thought after some thinking, this was the thought of what we would do is basically a one person TMC focused again on the situational awareness. Uh, and that's the value that, that we can provide uh, on a command level and the value that we can uh, convey to others that situational awareness. Uh, so overall, you know, between all of these things, um, especially with the, uh, with the riots and everything, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, for sure, it was extremely stressful. We made it through, um, you know, there's the ongoing issues of camera zooming and, you know, making sure that the MnDOT cameras are in the gray area and not being targeted themselves by protest groups and being very careful about the law enforcement use. Um, even just, you know, and then a lot of stuff for the DOT, just basic stuff like when, when maintenance is going out to shut some down say, hey, can you have your guys go a thousand feet up? Don't shut it down at the dog legs, shut it down at the clover leaf. And then now people have two ways that they can go to, to, uh, to be detoured. So that was very, uh, very uh, worked out pretty well. Um, that ability to coordinate between the, uh, on an individual level and then some of the uh, individual troopers that were up here. So those were all pluses as well. Um, and again, the, the scale of this was so nuts. And so uh, it blew up so quickly. Um, really hard to, to deal with it on the fly. I guess the one other point that I'd put in there, I mean, if it happened here, I mean, there's certainly uniquenesses here to Minnesota, but if it happened here, it could happen most anywhere else. So it's a hard one to plan for, but um, hopefully nobody ever, uh, else has to deal with it. So that is my, that's my rant. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the time. Hey, John, great presentation. I tell you, you, you know, some of, some of the things you talk about um, you know, I'll, I'll fall back to, you know, pre-planning, you know, and, and your, your advance when you have the opportunity, sometimes the luxury, although you may not use that word, when you can see a hurricane coming or a tropical system coming and you can plan for it versus the no uh, advance warning, you know, earthquake, civil dis disturbance, you know, that all has to be, you know, within your game plan. And uh, after action reports, and, and uh, uh, bring out all the lessons learned and help you plan for that next event, right? So, I mean, something as simple as not putting barrels out, right? Because somebody will show up with a sawzall and cut them in half and now you got shields. You know, that, that's just stuff that you learn, right? You, you learn because it, it actually happened. So yeah, the, the, the mutual aid and the mutual communication and mutual assistance you know, in the pre-planning stages and post-event post, post event stages, it, it's just worth its weight in gold. So thanks, John. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, I'd like to bring up uh, the, the folks from uh, Iowa. And uh, we have with us uh, Sinclair Stolle. Sinclair has been with the Iowa DOT for 25 years, uh, including the last 13 years, managing the uh, ATMS and ATIS programs as a traffic management system engineer. 
Uh, Sinclair works uh, to find innovative ways and technologies to improve safety and mobility uh, in, Ohio, in Iowa and uh, statewide traffic management center, uh, make it more efficient. Uh, and, and she's also joined by uh, Ashley Hotchberger. Uh, Ashley uh, started her role at Iowa in October of 21. Uh, she served 13 years as a police officer prior to that. Her areas of expertise uh, include data information and analysis, GIS mapping, and community out outreach. Uh, Ashley uh, uh, loves her new role, and she's excited to continue. And uh, we're, we're grateful that she's going to take the time, uh, along with uh, Sinclair, uh, to share what's happening uh, out there in Iowa and the uh, good practices and lessons learned. And uh, uh, Ashley or Sinclair, I believe Sinclair, you're on first. Or is it Ashley? Nope, Ashley. Ashley, okay, Ashley, you got it. There we go. I couldn't unmute myself. You Thank see you. it? You can see my screen, okay? Yes, we can see it. We can see it, Ashley. Good job. All right. Well, thank you for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the group. Um, I'm not sure our presentation is quite as exciting as John's, but we'll do our best here. I um, actually had the opportunity a few months ago to go tour um, the TMC up at Roseville and to meet John. So it's cool to, to see his presentation. So today, Sinclair and I, uh, we're just going to be doing a quick overview about um, Tim in Iowa and then some strategies for quicker um, incident detection in Iowa. Uh, just a brief overview about our statewide traffic management center or TMC. It is located in Ankeny in central Iowa. It's in the basement of the motor vehicle building. Um, it is uh, staffed 24 hours a day, every day of the year. So no matter what time of day or you know holidays, if you call, somebody will be there. Uh, unlike Minnesota, it is contracted out. So the DOT owns the TMC, but um, they have their own program manager, and then all the operators are contracted out. So we actually have a new company coming in October, or excuse me, August 1st, AECOM will be the new contractor. So we will um, get to work with them and, and partner with them very, very soon. And then lastly, our um, safety service patrol, it's um, in Iowa, we call it the highway helper. They um, are dispatched out of the TMC. So um, we coordinate with them either on the phone or with uh, chat sessions. We're able to coordinate with Highway Helper as well. So just transitioning to some of the tools, uh, the TMC, um, we have our dynamic message signs. When someone asks me what I do at the DOT, it's, it's really hard to summarize. So I always tell them about the message boards because people always know what the message boards are. Um, there's We have several of those throughout the state. And then we have um, about 500 cameras also throughout the state. I didn't mention before, it is a statewide TMC. So we cover every portion of the state. It's not just um, the urban areas. We do also have the rural ones. Um, granted, we might not have cameras there, but we do. Um, we still serve those areas as well. And then you can see on the bottom there our video wall that was taken recently down in the TMC. So the operators can do a tour of the cameras, you know, kind of flip through them, or if there's an incident, then um, they can keep that uh, camera stationary in order to monitor it. We have 511, which is um, Sinclair is the expert on that, that we um, utilize as far as ways which Sinclair will go into a little bit further here. And then the social media interaction. We have, we work very closely with the Strategic Communications Bureau. So um, they do Facebook and then they do Twitter as well. And then actually in the off hours overnight, um, the TMC operator will monitor um, the social media on, on their behalf as well. And then we also have our um, traffic incident management or TIM plans. And right now, all of those uh, TIM plans are going under re of review. So someone is making sure that they are accurate and that they're up to date. And of course, we're finding, you know, it's construction season. So um, we co constantly have to, to monitor, monitor those and make sure that they're correct. Because if you throw a construction into an area that has a TIM plan, then it'll need to be adjusted. So those are a few of the tools that we utilize. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so some of the um, more specific incident detection tools that we use um, in the TMC regarding kind of data, um, NRIX, which I think a lot of um, states probably have, uh, and you can see a picture at the right showing, um, you know, a slowdown. Um, and we do we do have traffic in Iowa occasionally, <laughs> um, contrary to maybe what some people think. But um, anyway, so we have that integrated into our ATMS, so the TMC is able to easily see, you know, backups or um, crashes, things that are closing um, lanes or or queuing traffic. Um, we also have that data integrated into a dashboard uh, that is on both sides. You may have seen that in the picture that Ashley showed earlier. Um, it was on each side of the video wall and that easily shows the bottlenecks also that we're seeing um, and how long uh, they've been up there and active and location and all that stuff. So it's kind of a at a glance look. Um, Waze, which is kind of a big deal and I'll go into that more, but how we've, um, integrated that in for incident detection. Um, we've been a partner of the Ways for Cities uh, program since the beginning, back in, I think it was 2014. And we started out um, just kind of like the easiest way was to get it integrated to do um, email notifications. We filtered the data and then um, now to being integrated into our ATMS. Uh, and then traffic sensors, um, you know, everybody's got those. Uh, we're using those for queue detection um, that automatically posts in our mainly in our work zones that automatically post um, slow or stop traffic messages to our DMS and portables in the area for that work zone. And then cameras, as um, Ashley mentioned previously, that we have about five five hundred cameras or so statewide and. Um, those are a manual thing that as far as uh, incident de detection, but um, it's also good for uh, verification. And then something that we recently added was um, getting access to our state patrol CAD uh, system. And that's coming in through, again, um, we have like a ops dashboard um, that the TMC uses that was uh, homemade uh, by a great programmer in our office. And um, but that's that's being filtered, um, you know. Of course, no PII, all that stuff. So, um, and then those are uh, verified. Once they've been verified, then they're added into the ATMS. And then, as far as um, sharing cameras, I I don't know how common. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of uh, agencies, DOTs, share their cameras with law enforcement or um, other state agencies that would be interested. Um, we have. We share through our ATMS, this is a screenshot showing kind of our um, camera interface within OpenTMS is our ATMS. Um, but we share with law enforcement, cities, counties, EMAs, our um, contractors um, for like our intelligent work zones or our ITS maintenance contractors, um, Federal Highway and the National Weather Service. Um, so they all get access to OpenTMS. We can filter out all the permissions and stuff to basically only give them to the cam, give them access to the cameras. And then some have PTZ um, control, and others we don't allow that. But most of like law enforcement and stuff does have uh, access. Um, in our previous system, the media also had because there was a way to basically kind of have just a camera site. Um, the media had access to that um, to have a little better quality than the public um, for uh, video. And we, with the change in our vendors about a year and a half ago, um, that changed. And so we kind of gave them a special site that um, allows them to be able to better have share the, the video um, on their, like on TV, I guess. So. Um, and also something that I know is not common for a lot of DOTs, but we record all of our cameras. Um, most of them are using Genetech and then the ones that are on, um, like in our rural areas that are on cell modems, uh, those record to SD cards and then we can access them uh, with, uh, we use Access Camera Companion to pull any of video from that. Um, and we make that available to anyone for free. Uh, and that's to public, law enforcement, um, attorneys, whoever, you know, anybody can um, get access to it. 
Um, and then we use that for after actions and training and, and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but we have an online request form and we're bit by bit, we're slowly um, automating uh, each of the steps. Uh, we've, we've done pretty well, but um, we're actually actively working on that right now. So uh, if you want, when we get slides out, you can click on those links and kind of see what we have. Back to you, Ashley. I think we're running a little bit short on time. So I'm going to skip this slide, actually, and I'm going to let you. So people. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. okay you're good. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to go over on my time. So. Um... No, that's all right. That's all right. If you go over a little bit, that's all right. So. Okay. We don't, we don't I can't see the, the chat. So um, just this one talking about the um, collaborative communication. Um, as you heard, you know, I was a police officer for a long time, so it's been really important to me to make sure that we, um, that I leverage those connections. And so I worked really hard, you know, um, with the dispatch centers because they play a huge role um, in, in what the TMC does. So trying to do a lot of outreach there. The mock chat um, that actually was developed um, by somebody at the at the DOT, and so it, it has, serves many many functions. But one thing is that the, uh, the dispatch centers, um, the state radios can communicate directly with the TMC, and so they can open up the chat session, and it saves them from having to pick up the phone, um, and it's much more efficient. Um, and then, yeah, the situational awareness between the DOT personnel and then law enforcement again um, leveraging those connections. Um, and then the after action reviews, we do those pretty much on an as needed basis. For example, I had one yesterday um, that was just myself and DOT about an incident that happened on I-35. But then next week I have one where there's gonna be tow companies, um, the law enforcement is there, DOT, myself. And so we get those key players involved and um, again, go over the after action, what went well, what didn't go well, and then we kind of lay out, you know, um, what would be the next steps so that we can um, improve for next time. And then again, the real time um, applications here, we have the 511, the website and the app. Um, I've already confessed to Sinclair before I got this position, I did not have 511. Um, I do now and I promote it to anyone that will listen to me because it is great. Um, I highly recommend it. And then again, the social media, I talked about that earlier, and then um, search, circling back to Waze, which um, Sinclair will go into next. So as I mentioned before, we've been a partner with the um, Waze for Cities uh, from the beginning. And um, we started out with just doing the email notifications into the TMC, but if you've ever looked at a TMC inbox, you no, they get a bazillion emails. And so, um, you know, we tried to get off that as soon as we could uh, to a way that was better integrated into their workflow. So we um, added it into their dashboard um, that we use. And that's, like I said, kind of it's homegrown from one of our programmers um, in our office. And uh, I know there are small screenshots, but <laughs> maybe when you get the slides, you can look at it a little closer. But um, on the left is uh, showing the dashboard and you can see those are our incidents that come in. That's also, so there's a little um, Waze icon uh, on the left side. It's blue uh, in that kind of table. And then there's also one that looks like a law enforcement badge and that's coming in from the CAD system. And so then if they, if the operators um, click on those and also just to, those are filtered um, events. So we're not getting, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I can't think of off the top of my head. We're, they're, they're filtered to things that we can take action on easily. Um, so a lot of those in there were stalled vehicles um, that we uh, have highway helpers uh, able to go and, and investigate or, um, you know, look at. Uh, and then also there is one in there that was a crash. So um, anyway, so this is showing that. And then if they click on um, that event in that row, then it brings up the screenshot on the right. Um, and then we're, we're really close. We launched the integration um, into the ATMS, which would make it much easier because it's all in one system and then you know can create an event from the ways events. But um, we ran into a, a bug and are working through that right now. So. Uh, 
anyway, so that, that's coming really soon. And then um, I just thought this was a, a good thing to show. It showed, this is just from the last, um, I think the last year basically, um, but it was, it's showing the, um, at least the one on the top is the last year, but it shows the amount of incidents that we are seeing that are being initially detected from the Waze events. And this is exactly the reason that I wanted to get involved with the um, Waze for Cities program because we have a lot of areas, um, like in the rural areas and things like that, that we um, just, you know, we don't have sensors, we don't have cameras, um, any of those types of things. And, and I just, you know, this was one way that we could easy, more easily um, get information about uh, incidents that are happening on our roads. So. Uh, this shows, for example, um, it's like, basically it's been around 20 to 30% um, for quite a while, last few years, um, our, that percentage is the initial notification um, of an incidents that we're getting um, in the TMC. So it's pretty impressive, I think. And um, also, I mean, just a, a great tool for um, notifying operators. Another thing I wanted to show was it's not just, um, you know, Waze is not just thing um, events that humans are are notifying, you know, the crowdsourced stuff. Um, I guess this is considered crowdsourced, but it also does, Waze also does um, passive event creation. So meaning if you have the, if you have the app open and it, it's, cr you know, creating or um, collecting data, speed data, things like that, where you are, um, that, if it notices like several wazers, and I don't know the algorithms, they won't share all that. But um, you know, if they are seeing slowdowns from several uh, vehicles, um, it will start creating this jam, uh, and that actually goes out to five one one, and um, but also into the TMC on that dashboard that I showed. But I just thought this was an incident I happened to collect or find that um, it just shows to you know more verification. You know, the Google traffic layers line up um, almost exactly with the, the Waze jam. So just kind of another validation for that. Okay, and transitioning a little bit into um, the TIM program, right now uh, we started back up doing the TIM newsletter. That's um, our TIM coordinator at the DOT and our bureau. She worked to develop this and it's going to be sent out quarterly and it does go out to um, a, a large audience, it includes first responders, DOT, the towing companies, um, really anybody that wants it. And it does give an update about the types of training, that um, you know the Tim update for the the trainings that have gone on. Um, there's some after action review on there. It highlights some upcoming um, trainings, and then that's actually what we do at the quarterly meeting as well. Um, the next bullet point. So we just had our quarterly Tim meeting last week, and we do offer in person and virtual, so that way we can get a larger crowd. But we go over um, somebody from the Fire Training Service Bureau gives an update on the most recent, you know, the numbers, pretty much how this webinar started, the numbers, how many people have been trained, breaks it down, you know, fire, police, um, we go over that. And then some trends that we're seeing, um, somebody from Iowa State University comes in and, and talks about um, the quick clearance times, whether, you know, that is increased or decreased, uh, secondary crashes, um, and then they lay that out on a hotspot map so that we can, you know, work with law enforcement. Can we target those areas for enforcement where we're having these secondary crashes or repeat crashes and, and try and come up with a game plan there. So that's um, what we do at those quarterly meetings. And then, then that uh, we can transition into, we are actually having a TIM conference. Uh, I'm on the planning committee if you do have any questions about that, but it will be September 21st in Ames. And again, we're inviting, you know, anybody who wants to come, um, who, who wants to learn more about Tim, it is free to attend and um, we are still finalizing the agenda, but I can say for certain that 
you will learn about the traffic management center and highway helper because I am speaking on those. So, um, and then we drones, those, you know, it seems to be really a hot topic. Um, the Iowa State Patrol, they utilize drones, their troopers do, their um, technical investigators for scene, for scene management. Um, they go out and do all sorts of measurements. And so um, the DOT actually, we're looking at implementing that in the highway helper. To, we're getting two pilots um, in the highway helper program so they can uh, fly drones as well. So we'll be talking about that. And then we thought it'd be beneficial to hear from the towers. Um, so we're having a Q&A panel with them about what they're seeing um, out on the roadway from their perspective. And then uh, we're gonna be doing a um, large scale after action review that we can highlight um, about a major incident and walk through what um, gets done in one of those. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And then lastly, just play this very short video. This is from um, our highway helper. Um, and you can see there, I just, we wanted to highlight this to drive home, you know, this is why Tim is so important, you know, the quick clearance, keeping our roadways safe and getting people um, where they need to be um, safely and efficiently. I think that's the ultimate goal, right? That we learned safe and efficient. Those, those were the words that came up. So um, I think, you know, this, again, this video just drives home that that's what we're all here to do and the purpose of Tim, so. That I think, and then here's our contact information. But again, this will get sent out, so please reach out to Sinclair or myself if you have any questions. So outstanding, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, uh, Sinclair. Great presentation. Uh, learned something uh, at every talking Tim I do, and I'll tell you, you know, the, the newsletter going out with the items that, that you mentioned in there, that's that's a fantastic communication tool. Uh, also, I'd be amiss if I if I didn't at least mention that, uh, you know, there's a uh, traffic incident management programs producing um, five tech lessons. And uh, the first two tech lessons there, Tech A and Tech B, uh, Tech A is uh, traffic management centers and, uh, and B is uh, CAD and CAD integration. Um, so, you, you know, there's, uh, Look forward to seeing those because there's also great information there, uh, and, and the and the work that you're doing there is uh, is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you know, with that said, I guess it, it's it's time to uh, to to open up um, the uh, to, to see if we have any uh, questions uh, that anyone would like to uh, express or put forward to any of our speakers. Adam and, uh, and Kevin, uh, are the lines open if need be? Joe, if, if people want to raise their hands, uh, they can, uh, to ask a question on audio, okay. they can raise their hands and uh, we can certainly open it up. Or okay. uh, there's a few questions in the chat box area, not in the Q&A, but in the chat box. Um, I think everybody wants to see that video or wants access to that video from Iowa yeah. for training purposes. Yeah, it looks it looks that way. It's uh, it, it's a good good tool to drive home the point, and you know it's it, it also drives home the 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 point that you know we know there's 29 fatalities year to date. Um, so you, you you know one has to understand that at least there have been probably dozens of other hits right and where where apparatus is damaged or there there's an injury but it, you know it's not life-threatening it's a close call and, and one thing in common when, when when i've spoken to the folks that have been on the scene and, and i even said it myself when i had a close call a few years back and when someone said where were you at and i i kind of held my hands up and, and held you know my fingers about four inches apart and said it missed me by that much or you know, two seconds earlier, and I'd have been right there because that's where I was, you know. And, and that's 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 what you know we 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 understand, you know, is the driving purpose of traffic incident management. It saves lives every single day. Uh, I'm a firm believer of that. Uh, I I've, I've watched it. I know it. Uh, and even in the cases, you know, where where everything is set, you know, the, the, the traffic incident management, 
all the practices are, are out there. Everybody's enforcing it. Everything is set up properly, yet someone still manages to breach the scene. And, and at that point, we all know it happens at the snap of a finger and, and you're kind of at its mercy at that point. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, we have to focus, you know, on those distracted drivers and, and uh, take, take a good solid look at, you know, uh, what we're doing and how we're setting up and to be sure that we're not, you know, contributing, even if it's remotely, that we're not contributing uh, to, to, to what occurs there. Uh, so, you know, I had mentioned, you know, the TMC and the CAD tech lessons, but, you know, there are a couple others coming. There's uh, uh, data and crowdsourcing and, and there's the, the unmanned aerial systems uh, that, that was mentioned by Sinclair and and um, we also have uh, connected vehicles uh, tech lesson coming out. And, and for the folks in Iowa and, and, and the rest of you folks online there that may be out in the rural regions and hither lands, um, you know, there's also a focus lesson F uh, for rural traffic incident management. Uh, and that, that focus lesson should be coming out uh, hopefully early fall. Um, and, and along with these, uh, these other tech lessons that'll be rolling out shortly also. Uh, Paul and Jim, I'm, I'm not sure if you wanted to speak on, on any of those or while we're waiting on some questions or hands to go up. Well, you know, I never miss an opportunity to speak. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to emphasize something that, you know, when we're talking about the Tim timeline, I think most people are familiar with it. The Tim timeline we talk about in the national responder training and, and, um, and things like that. Um, we, uh, you know, we, one of the, one of the things that, you know, is so important to us is that, um, early notification, right? I worked at a TMC, I mean, it's a TMC for, I don't know, 12 years, 10 or 12 years. And, um, and, you know, the early notification and then the location of the incident, um, sometimes we were the last to know back at the TMC, so, you know, using those tools, I know we talked about ways, I'm not endorsing ways, but I, I do, I have seen it, I'm fairly familiar with it. Um, I was involved with a team on EDC5 for crowdsourcing for operations. So I am familiar with it and, and it's just amazing, um, coupled with other information, how that, can, how that can have an impact on the TIM timeline, right? The early, you know, getting that earliest notification. And, um, you know, so, you know, I, I also know that not everyone here can have an impact on what the TMC does and how the TMC in, in, in does their notifications or in, integrate software and things like that. So I know that, uh, but I do know that you all can probably plant the seed at the very least, right? So we can get better um, if you're, if you're, um, if your area TMC is not doing the best that they can with early notification, you might want to just um, you know tell them. When, uh, and, and by the way, all these videos, uh, this presentation will be available in I think a couple of weeks. Uh, Adam, is that still a couple of weeks? Um, be, um, and it's po will be posted on the NoCo website. So that's all I wanted to say about that early notification piece. So, um, Jim. Yes, um, I want to underscore the video, back to that video, if you notice that highway helper obviously saved his own life because he had the presence of mind to, <clears throat> as he's recovering cones or setting out cones, I wasn't sure which one he was doing, but uh, he kept looking back and, and he saw that, that motorist, uh, errant driver, what have you, coming at him. Um, and uh, like Paul and Joe, I've been in the field. I was a practitioner for many years and um, experienced the, the danger uh, that is, um, well, just being on the side of the road. You could be a motors family. You know, I cringe seeing folks changing tires and things like that. Um, but uh, I too want to uh, amend the great presentations today uh, by all. And uh, I want to take a second to go back about, how, you know, I hope no one took, well, if, if you got upset at me, uh, 
and and you know get a, get upset at me every time during talking to him when I mentioned the training or the lack of training by a lot of states. Um, please don't take it that way, okay? Um, ask yourself, ask your teammates, your colleagues in your committees. You know what what is it that we need to do? Um, Paul, Joe, and I are always available. We're, we're willing to coach you. We're willing to talk about it. But there's there's something wrong when we're not training more. Uh, there, there's just something wrong. Are we not? Um, are are you not you? Are states not reporting their numbers? Uh, we know that's that's been a problem, you know, for many years. But uh, I can't emphasize enough that everyone on this call today, and I saw for a long while there, we're still at 123 approximately. We were, we were close to 150 there for, for most of the presentations today, which is awesome. And we love you for staying with us, uh, but I can't emphasize enough that all of us need to do more uh, to continue uh, training our responders in, in all disciplines, um, please. Um, never take your eye off traffic. Never. One eye on traffic every, like Paul, or well, Joe says it all the time as well. Head on a swivel, folks. One second you're here, the next second you are gone. So that's all I have, Paul, Joe, back to you. I was just going to say that um, I think Jim, uh, Paul has not, but Jim and Joe have had to go up and over a guardrail to save their rear ends, I think. So they're, they're speaking. I know Jim has. So speaking yeah. from, uh, speaking from, um, you know. <laughs> yeah. And it happens fast. It, it happens yeah. too fast for you to really be able to do anything about it. You know, you're, you're just, that's right. You're just a victim to whatever, whatever yeah. happens. So, yeah. I, I think, I think showing that video to executives who have never stood on the, <laughs> on the highway, right. Yeah. Uh, maybe they can get the message that way. If they're, if they're um, not participating in your program or supporting your program, you know, that and, have them stand on the hey, high speed. Lane. Right. Yeah. Paul, Joe, I want to put a plug in real quick. Go ahead, Joe. No, go Joe. Go. Yeah, with just a couple minutes we have left, uh, just a reminder, everybody, Crash Responder Safety Week, the 14th through the 18th of November, a lot is happening. States are really engaged uh, with us uh, uh, in the process of putting together pro uh, proclamations, 10 proclamations, those states that haven't done it. Anybody on this call that, you know, you're at a state that hasn't uh, produced a, a 10 proclamation, for CRSW, please continue and, and all the rest of the uh, publication outreach activities um, and uh, uh, practices uh, that you're planning. So uh, please don't forget, because forget, we're about, what, three months away, I think. Um, just a plug for CRSW. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jim. It's really important. And I just want to say about the training, Joe, before we go, about the training, you know, we're close to that 600,000. Jim gets aggravated. You guys don't have to deal with Jim, but I have to. With, you know, that he gets, he's so frustrated <laughs> and aggravated. So come on, just, if you're not going to do it for yourselves or for those responders, do it for me. Let's get over that 600,000. It's not that far. We're not that far away if you consider the whole nation. Everyone go out and train somebody, then report it. I find some numbers that you haven't reported yet. So um, we just, uh, you know, it's a sad thing to see every time Jim sees those reports. So let's get to 600. Sorry, Joe. And if you're lacking trainers, attend those train the trainers that are coming. Yeah, we can help. We can help if you if you have an idea we can help if you haven't trained train and if you are trained drill right keep your keep your skills sharp right have, have those company drills division drills whatever it takes you know stay sharp on what you do keep your head on a swivel and thanks everyone special thank you to our, our guest speakers and, and thank you all for attending don't forget to join us next month uh for another talking tim if you have ideas for a future talking Tim, please email us, let us know. 
Um, we're, we're always looking for uh, new topics and new ideas. So it's 301, ladies and gentlemen, uh, greatly appreciate your attendance. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you.